that might help him out because he could be needing a supporter down the road. And it looks like we are just about to begin. Tapu Lele starts for both <laughs> players. Looks like Philip will be going first. The respect for the Tapu Lele start, I like it. There's the, another Tapu Lele hits the board. That Wonder Tag ability going to allow Philip to search his deck for any supporter card and add it to his hand. Yep, Sam's just going to take a <laughs> quick read and figure out what that does. One of the uh, interesting parts of uh, Sam is that he's, he's kind of a more comedic, more laid-back person, <laughs> even at a, even at the tables like this, even when he's 8-1 at, at the biggest tournament in the world. Yeah, it, it helps to have that, because uh, you, you'd like to be able to uh, have that that mindset. You, you want to you wanna be able to relax yourself when you're playing so many rounds. So we see the Tapu Lele Wonder Tag does find a Bridget. Pretty common start from these decks. Uh, and that Bridget is going to fill Phillips Bench three Pokemon. It's going to get a Drampa and two Trubbish. Uh, pretty pretty much what you expect. Yeah, he has those two Trubbish there for him, which means that he's going to have some single prize exchanges coming his way if Sam starts to use those item cards that he has built up in his hand. And the uh, Bridget, of course, can grab the GX Pokemon. And a double colorless gets attached to that Drampa, and then he pa and then uh, Philip passes to Sam. Yeah, it's a nice safe play for Philip. He uh, he wants to go aggressive with that Drampa, uh, whereas Sam might be a, a, a little intimidated to start with his Drampa because he's worried about Zygards and Righteous Edges coming his way. Yeah, it's just like Sam considering what to do in this early turn. He has a few different options here. We get a good look at his hand. Um, just considering playing the N. Just saying, I don't need to play any of this stuff. I'd rather just refresh our hands. So both players shuffling their hands into their decks and drawing six cards. Yeah, he had a Psychic Energy. He also had a Double Colorless Energy. Uh, doing 40 damage isn't going to do too much for him right now, so that's uh, it's pretty irrelevant. He doesn't want the Drampa to come up and Righteous Edge remove that energy. He'd rather have that energy attachment on a bench Pokemon, and he's going to hope to get that now with the end. So here we go, Sam Chen. First turn of the game ends both players to six. Let's see what he can put together here. Looks like a fairly good hand for both players. Um, Philip's going to have some plays coming for him, and Sam is going to get that Pokemon down on his bench along with an energy attachment. Just depends how he wants to go about this. Does he want to focus on Trubbishes? Does he want to get that opening Drampa like he normally does in games? Uh, it's r really going to be telling what his strategy is coming into this matchup. So Ultra Ball for Sam discards that uh, Garbotoxin Garboder that you were saying isn't going to be too relevant in the matchup. And another copy of N that he can always get back with a uh, Versus Seeker. Sam's going to take a minute to look through his deck, just determine what's prized. We already know what's in his prizes, but Sam, of course, does not. So he needs to make sure that he understands what the contents of his deck are before making a decision. Yep. And it looks like he is going to uh, settle on that, that Trampa GX. Uh, it's, a, it's a great opening attacker for him, along with the fact that Trubbish, if you go early with your, your Garbodor, your opponent can just stop playing items, and then your damage output is, compl uh, is limited just based on whatever they do. So you'd rather control the tempo of the game and make them deal with your Trampa. Yeah, but it looks like that is the decision for Sam. Going to take the Trampa GX off of that Ultra Ball, you can see Tramp on your screen. One of the most versatile Pokemon. Uh, definitely the probably second best Pokemon out of Guardians Rising after the other card you can see on the board, <laughs> Tapu Lele. Yeah, the, the three that are on board already. And we're going to see a Big Wheel GX from Sam shuffling the one card uh, from his hand back into his deck and drawing ten. Yeah, that's usually pretty good when you get to see ten cards. <laughs> yeah, GX attacks uh, usually pretty big. I know that... Uh, we often joke that Big Wheel GX just kind of reads, force your opponent to play an N because there's just no way that you can let your opponent just have 10 cards in their hands. So if Philip has access to an N at all, you can believe he's going to be playing that on his turn. Right. We, you, we can definitely expect Sam to be able to pull off uh, a Berserk with a Lysander when he has 10 cards. And uh, that is definitely something that Philip cannot allow. So Philip is going to do uh, whatever he has. Uh, available to him to prevent that. It looks like I do see the N in his hand. Is that s that second card over to the left? But we'll see if he can confirm that for me. Yes, yeah, so we're going to see an Ultra Ball discarding a Psychic Energy and an Ultra Ball. Yep. 
is able to get down. Uh, I believe that is the, the full art print of the Zygarde. Yeah, that's a Zygarde <laughs> EX, kind of a uh, card you probably don't see a whole lot, but again, one of the things that is different about Philip's deck, and like you said, he does play that end, so... Sam had 10 cards in his hand for about half a turn, but he's just going to go back to six. Yeah, he got to figure out about half of his deck just because he drew it. So, both players going to six cards. So the Zygarde is on the board now for Philip, which is an interesting, uh, interesting to have that out. I don't know. I'm sure that Sam knew what was up. You know, once you get to this point in the tournament, you kind of... You don't have access to your opponent's deck list, but you try to like make sure you know what everyone's playing, and especially if there's anything important like that that can uh, potentially hurt you. Yeah, it's helpful for him to have the Zygarde down, and he found the Rainbow Energy, which means that he's set up for Lance Pulse or uh, maybe a, a Cell Storm with a with a Choice Band in the coming turns. But one thing that was an issue there was when he plays that down, if he wasn't able to find the Rainbow Energy, he could have had a, a full bench and not been able to use Sam's Magma Base, which uh, we're going to see probably this turn or next turn if Sam's able to get what he wants. Okay, so Sam going into his turn now. Drampa GX hits the bench. Has to, oh, maybe not. Has to consider what to do first. He's going to play a Professor Kikui, draw two cards. Boost any attacks damage by 20 this turn. Trubbish hits the bench. Drampa GX. There's a basic psychic energy on the bench, Drampa. Uh, Sam actually didn't have the uh, magma base. He had it in his 10-card hand, I think. Right, right. I was, I was saying if he, if he was able to draw into that. But unfortunately for him, only the Kikui was his draw supporter. So It looks like he's just going to go ahead and Righteous Edge for 40. Kind of getting no value there. Yeah, if... Um, if Philip didn't have the rainbow energy last turn, uh, we may have seen Sam just pass the turn there. That's how important that extra damage on the bench is. You just can't allow your opponent to have their berserk ready to go. So we see a field blower getting rid of Sam Chen's floatstone on his Tapu Lele before Philip adds a floatstone to his own Tapu Lele and plays a sycamore drawing a fresh hand of seven oh, cards. Oh, he found everything. He's got an energy. He's got a choice band. So he has the choice of either going in now with the Zygarde or he can uh, continue with his typical strategy of going Berserk. Uh, either will take out this Drampa. So looks like he's going to consider what to do. Just attaching the choice band and the Psychic to the Drampa GX. Yeah, I prefer the Drampa here because uh, this Drampa also can challenge a Tapu Lele uh, in the coming turns, whereas the Zygarde would only be able to challenge the Drampa. There is a Berserk for the knockout. Philip takes the first two prizes and immediately gets ahead of Sam here on day two of the North American International Championship. A good top deck from Sam, though. Yeah, he's able to get two free cards out of his deck, then. Uh, that's that's exactly the time that you're looking to draw teammates is when you have a knockout happen on your side. Looks like Sam will be playing that teammates. So you can see it on your screen, as long as a Pokemon got knocked out last turn, you can search your deck for any two cards. So very, very powerful in a situation like this. Right. He um he should be looking for magma base and a choice band. He has the rescue stretcher in hand, so he's able to rescue that Drampa. Uh, GX that just was recently knocked out, and he should be able to hold a, a VS Seeker for the coming turn. So it's a pretty strong uh, turn for Sam, and then he's just going to be looking to see if Philip has the answers with that Zygarde next turn. So it looks like Choice Band and Team Magma Secret Base, just like you said, are the cards Sam is considering playing. Going to take a look through his deck, just make sure that's what he wants to get, but those are the cards he immediately pulled to the front. Perhaps getting a Trubbish instead. Yeah, uh, I'm. Yeah, I'm assuming that he had the double colorless in his hand. He does he have does. that there, so we'll see if he's going to come to the same conclusion. I think that's what he's going to do. And of course, you don't have to show those cards with teammates. You can keep those to yourself. Yeah, so he does decide to get the stadium and the um, tool card, so he will be able to take a return knockout here uh, on Phillips Drampa. Yeah, and this is this is big. This is what Sam needs. If he if he wants to continue in this game, he needs to be able to challenge Philip every time there's a knockout. Sam playing the Team Magma Secret base, and then we're going to see that Drampa hit the board so that Berserk is turned on because of those two damage counters on the Drampa on the bench. Yep, and that's and a knockout. That's a knockout. 
So Sam Chen berserking back immediately ties the game up for four prizes. Let's see what Philip can put together. Promotes that floatstone Tapu Lele. Oh, finds second another rainbow, rainbow energy. And a choice band. Yeah, that second rainbow is really big. If if Philip didn't have that and uh, Sam just goes in with a with a righteous edge next turn, it, there's an, uh, there's a possibility that Zygar just doesn't find a rainbow for the rest of the game if Sam is able to use an end next turn. So Definitely a big play there. We see the power of Zygarde taking a knockout on the Drampa GX and putting Philip down to just two prizes. Any EX or GX knockout will win him game one in this match. Yep, and Sam's just going to promote the Drampa and hope for the best here. It looks like the only real option he has is to Righteous Edge and uh, perhaps use an N and then just hope that Philip doesn't even find any energy card. But we know that he plays 13. He's probably going to find something. Yeah, he does play, uh, for the record, Sam is playing 11, so Philip has a few more. And like you said earlier, because of that second rainbow, it doesn't matter. He just needs, you know, Cell Storm. He can attack with any energy he finds. So Sam is definitely not in a good position here. I think Sam may have been uh, taking a look at Philip's discard pile. I don't think there's many items for Gar Garboder to do much. I don't think uh, it's going to be able going to be able to... I don't think Sam is going to be able to put together much here. Right. This is really dependent on just what Philip is able to draw off of the end. Uh, Sam's going to do everything in his power to put himself in a great position, um, or a better position than this, but we'll see what he's able to do here. So that Ultra Ball finds a Garboder versus Seeker finds the end. This is exactly what Sam needs. It's why Anna is such a powerful card. Just kind of the only thing that it's really allowing Sam to get back in this game. Even then, it's close. Uh, he's going to need, Sam's going to need some unfortunate top decks from Philip to be able to pull this one out. But a player like Sam Chen makes very few mistakes, knows exactly uh, what his outs are, even when it might be, you know, something like 15% to win the game. Right. And, and uh, there's there's a, the, a big diminishing return here. If... Uh, Philip doesn't have the rainbow energy or any energy next turn. He, he's in a really bad spot because you can just righteous edge again and then remove all of the energies off of the Zygarde. So he just need if he can stop him for one turn, then it just compounds on itself. Unfortunately for Sam, I <laughs> did see, I believe Philip drew a basic psychic energy. Yep. Sam does have an Oracorio, going to consult his discard pile. Very quickly. Decides to play the Oracorio. He's already attached for the turn. Oracorio, of course, taking two damage counters off the Team Magma secret base. And there's the Righteous Edge. Philip just shows him the energy. <laughs> shows him that he can sell Storm. And that is game one. Philip Scholes takes game one over Sam Chen here in round 10. And wow, that's Zygarde tech. Yeah, so that basically went as you were describing. You know, it's the mirror match, which is usually kind of, you know, Drampa focus. It's usually kind of back and forth. But then, you know, Philip just has this uh, kind of silver bullet against Drampa. You know, we saw him just have two energy and take a knockout. Uh, just a 190 HP Pokemon. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think Philip may have found the the, the mirror match tech. And and that's wild because I haven't seen anyone else think of it. Uh, I, I've seen rainbow energies in this deck because people were just looking for a way to to get that extra damage down to, to power up their Berserk, but they didn't want to use the Magma base. And we see that he was able to come up with this, this tech slot, which works out perfectly for a deck that you're going to see so much of. We already said that a quarter of the top 64 is using uh, a, a variant of this style. So uh, c great job, Philip, for, for finding that and... Uh, we've already seen how successful he's been with an 8-1 and one record. So Sam's down a game. Philip has kind of executed his strategy, showing that he has a good deck list for the mirror match. What what does Sam have to do in this game to, to uh, be successful and hopefully take the game? Uh, I'm trying to f think if he can even not use Drampa as much it's it's hard to say that because that's the whole focus of his deck and he's looking to remove those special energy cards it's it's but it's hard to drought Philip of energies because he has 13 so you have to just find a way to make Philip use a lot of item cards maybe you have to use Tapu Lele as an as a main attacker even and just get some damage down and then use your your Garbodors because you have more Garbodors than Philip you can win that exchange at least 
Both players consulting their opening hands. It's like a trubbish start for Sam Chen and also a trubbish start for Philip. Uh, might be taking a look at Sam's prizes. Two double colorless oh, and he two only magma plays base. two base. Wow, so with no magma base in Philip's deck to help Sam, he will not be able to uh, turn on Berserk very easily. Yeah, uh, okay. those were those are Sam's again. Yep, there's Phillips. And the only thing we're looking over for is uh, if he prized that Zygarde, and he did not. So uh, we will be seeing Zygarde come down again this game. All right, so game two, Sam Chen is going to start us off. He's starting Trubbish, plays a Tapu Koko onto the bench, attaches a basic psychic energy to the Trubbish, and does he he does have a pressure sycamore in his hand, discarding his entire hand and. Including a field blower, so one item for the Garbodor there, and drawing seven. Yeah, able to throw away that Garbotoxin Garbodor, so that that's not a, a waste for him at all. And he's able to find an Ultra Ball. He has another energy for the turn. He has plenty of supporters to choose from. So, a uh, relatively good start for Sam. It's nice and steady, but uh, he's got to find a strategy that's going to work here against Philip. Yeah, we can see him kind of figuring out what he wants to discard with this Ultra Ball and what Pokemon he wants to find with it. A lot of decisions from Sam just taking a minute. He really, like you said, it's very important to kind of figure out how he's going to structure this game. Trying a kind of classic strategy of just attacking with Drampa GX did not work last time. Yeah. And he's just going to choose to float stone the Trubbish, retreat, leave the Tapu Koko active, and pass the turn. Yeah, and don't think that he's going to attack with the Tapu Koko just because of this promotion. The fact that Tapu Koko has 110 hit points along with free retreat means that he has plenty of time to sit there and decide when he, what he wants to do. But on the other hand, uh, Philip just passed. Yeah, Philip just drops the Drampa, attaches, and passes the turn. Doesn't play any other cards, no draw supporters. I didn't quite see his hand. I don't know what's going on there, but he just passes back to back to Sam, who's going to play a Pokemon fan club and start getting uh, getting some Pokemon onto the bench. Maybe he's just playing around Trash Lanch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see what what Sam's able to come up with here now. Uh, that's definitely the, what he wants to see out of Philip. If his opponent doesn't do anything, that's an easy way to move on to game three. So Sam taking a look through his deck here. Interestingly, he has to kind of decide. You know, he might have had one strategy going into it last turn, kind of thinking, okay, it didn't work out so well for me. What can I do differently? And now after seeing that just immediate pass from Philip, he has to be thinking, okay, well, now what does this mean? Do I change my strategy now? Do I need to get a little bit more aggressive? Like, how do I, how do I edit my thinking based on that? Yeah, looking uh, from from what, what I saw in his hand, he had a psychic energy. He had access to an Ultra Ball, which means that Garbodor could come out and then he uh, he could have access to Trash Lanch, but that doesn't do anything for him. He, he'd be looking to have a, a double colorless energy to even use uh, Acid Spray and just have that knockout happen there. So he still doesn't have a knockout and you don't really want to damage Trubbish just in case you're playing into Floatstone double colorless energy and you got baited by Philip. You can't have that happen. See Sam taking a quick look through his deck, just trying to determine what his prizes are. I think he just realized, hey, all of my uh, secret base are prized. <laughs> wow. That's, that's not good. <laughs> so he does decide to get a Drampa GX and a Trubbish Pokemon Fan Club. Unlike Bridget, putting those cards right into his hand. They both hit the board. Basic Psychic on the Drampa. And along with the Choice Band. Sam has a uh, big wheel available to him, which I expect to see. He had N in his hand, but he doesn't want to do that when Philip's not doing anything. Yeah, we saw the uh, big wheel not really have much of an effect on the last game, but hopefully, may you know, Philip doesn't draw exactly N. Sam will get to start his hand with ten cards, or start his turn with ten cards in hand, rather. Yeah, this seems like a very safe turn for him to do it because if Philip had an N, he would have had to have played it. There's no way that. Uh, he's he's thinking uh, the right play is just pass with an energy. So here we go, big wheel GX. Ten cards. Philip starts his turn. I didn't quite see what his draw was. He does have an Ultra Ball, so he can. Uh, he Ultra Balls away the Oracorio and a Lysander, so he does have access to Tapu Lele now. To find himself a supporter. Got to imagine he's going to be finding an N. Yep, and he has a rainbow and a double colorless energy too, so he can get that attachment onto the Drampa if he likes. 
So Wonder Tag ability coming into play. Philip just taking this first opportunity to look through his deck, determine what's prized, and determine what he wants to take. Yeah, you, you definitely have to take N here um, with the Wonder Tag. You can't let Sam have 10 cards. But from that point, he just has to decide if, if the energy attachment is worth it, if he would rather have a rainbow energy on the Tapu Lele, and then just find the double colorless later. Uh, it, it just Do you want to spread the risk, or w would you rather just invest everything into that Drampa? And we'll see what he, what he decides there. He does take the N off of the Wonder Tag, attaches the double colorless, evolves, and immediately just plays it. Yeah, I, I like this play from, from Philip, but the, the evolution helps a lot too because you're not just going to give Sam that knockout with Berserk, the just the base damage of it. Y you make him have to, to two-shot a Garbodor, which is definitely something that Sam wasn't expecting. He's usually going to have a magma base and be able to easily take care of a Garbodor. So both players getting six cards. Again, the uh, immediate response to a Big Wheel GX is typically just a play and end and kind of a regardless of anything else. Just can't really let your opponent, especially in this kind of deck, start with 10 cards. Like, there's so many ways to just go double colorless, choice band, uh, you know, Team Magma secret base. There's just so many simple things you can do. So both players refreshing to six, and let's see what they can put together here. Yeah, uh, not the best hand from Philip. He does have a supporter for the following turn along with an energy, but you would think that he's going to really start looking for that Zygarde. If he can get the Zygarde and the rainbow energy like last time, he has the Drampa as a, a a big scary target and then the Zygarde to follow up, which it was the reason that he was able to be so successful in that opening game. Yeah, so we see just a pass from Philip, content to leave things as they are. This Tapu Lele is probably looking for Lysander. Um, Sam knows that he doesn't have any way to activate Berserk, and he needs to start challenging Philip. And one way to do that is to remove that double colorless energy from the Drampa. So you're predicting a Lysander for the Drampa, and then Righteous Edge, get rid of that double colorless. It looks like that's what Sam is planning to do. He does take the Lysander after uh, taking some time to count his versus Seekers. Yeah, this, this just seems like the, the best play available to Sam. He just hasn't really been able to do much when he looks and sees that he can never uh, place damage onto his side of the field. So uh, th this is a, a safe play for him. It also uh, challenges Philip. Philip needs to have a response here. And this also means that Philip isn't able to play a rainbow energy and the double colorless in the same turn, obviously. So Berserk... Uh, counterattack isn't going to happen uh, for 150 or potential 180. Yeah, so there's a Righteous Edge. 50 damage, getting rid of the double colorless, putting Philip in a really awkward position here. Consulting his hand, but it doesn't look like he knows exactly what to do. Yeah, he has N, but Sam just played his hand down relatively low, so... You don't really want to do that, but he, he has to. He has to keep going, and he doesn't want to play uh, any energies onto the Drampa. He'd rather start to work on his Zygarde, so adding anything extra to the Drampa there kind of just seems silly. You're going to lose that energy. Yeah, especially I think the only energy was the Rainbow, so it's just definitely... Oh, yeah, that'd be bad. You don't stuff. do that. <laughs> no, both players getting six cards off this end. No prizes taken so far in Game 2. Yep, we're just going to see if Philip's able to either find that Zygarde, the, the, the copy itself, or if he can just find an Ultra Ball, because he needs to start working on that. And a lot of energies. Yeah, a lot of energy. No Zygarde, no Ultra Ball, just energy uh, and supporters versus Seekers, ways to get supporters. Rainbow energy on the Garboder on the bench. Yeah, you would think that he would like to hold on to that rainbow for the Zygarde, but it's actually more important for him to play this now because that means that this Drampa, even though it's already has some damage on it, it can potentially get a big swing, find a double colorless energy and a choice band, and then have a return knockout on Drampa because he's seen that Sam hasn't played a magma base down. There's still a possibility that he just doesn't able isn't able to get that uh, that berserk knockout. Yeah, so second big wheel GX of the game. Both players have flipped 
there. GX counters 10 cards for Philip. Teammates off the top for Sam. Not able to play it in this position. Yeah, and the supporter of choice for Sam is, once again, it's going to be that N. You, you can't let Big Wheel happen. That's when bad things happen. Looks like Sam is considering playing a Drampa onto the bench. Once again, we know that he does not have access to Team Magma's secret base. Psychic Energy gets attached to that Drampa, and here is the N once again. Yeah, normally you want to save that open, that last spot there for the Magwim base, and then uh, placing a Pokemon down to have 20 damage count, uh, 20 damage on it. But he knows that that's prized. He kind of gives Philip a little bit of information that he may have already had because you haven't seen a Magma base in so long. But it's important for Sam to have that that extra attacker available for him with that Drampa. So uh, an important play for him there, and the biggest piece having that end to to counter the big wheel. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen we had never we have not seen at least the games that I've casted, we have not seen a big wheel successfully happen. Just ten cards in hand and you get to start your turn and do everything you want. Yeah, those games usually end pretty quickly <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> you do see that Sam has a double colorless energy in hand. Looks like he's just gonna go ahead and righteous edge for another fifty damage. Yep. And now it's it's up to, to Philip in his hand. He's got a double colorless energy. If he has a choice band, he's able to take a knockout here on the Drampa. So any supporter that can really get his hands uh, a little bit further is what he's going to be looking for. Taking a look at Sam's discard pile before deciding what he should do. Maybe taking a look at his own as well. Floatstone on the active Drampa GX. Yeah, he may have been counting uh, how many item cards Sam's played, uh, because this Floatstone means that he's no longer going to be focusing on a Berserk knockout because of that. Uh, there's no way to play the Choice Band there as well. Uh, so he had the option there, actually, with the Choice Band and Double Colorless, but he just may have a little more of a read on how many items are in Sam's discard pile. That may be enough for a knockout. I haven't been keeping track of it. Yeah, I did not. I did not see how many there were, but uh, if we see a trash lance this turn, we can figure that out. Uh, another end being played. Seems like the most popular supporter in this match. Both players resetting to six. Yeah, like you said, Philip could have gone in with that Drampa and taken a knockout with the double colorless and a choice band, but choosing to take a little bit more of a conservative route and uh, move that. Drampa safely to the bench. Yep, and he it looks like that's the Zygarde. That should be very helpful. He's he's been he's been looking for that because as soon as you get that online, uh it's pretty difficult to stop. Also able to find an energy with that, uh that definitely rewards him for the play of not playing an energy card in, in his uh hand previous to the end. Yeah, so that Zygarde, the kind of the trump card in the matchup hits the board, and now Philip taking a little bit of time to think about what he wants to do. I can't imagine there are that many items in that'd Sam's be a lot, yeah. Discard pile <laughs> just, that just looking at how high his discard pile stacks, it looks like there's only maybe seven or eight cards in there total. So I, I don't know if uh, Sam's gone that far. And it looks like Philip will just retreat to the Tapu Lele GX and pass the turn to Sam. Yeah, this is a, a pretty safe play for Philip. He gets to buy a little more time. Uh, he knows that the Tapu Lele cannot get knocked out because Sam doesn't play Rainbow Energies. Uh, and he'd also need another attachment to do the Berserk even. So uh, he knows that this Tapu Lele probably is going to take 50. And then he just has another turn to find that Rainbow Energy and, and get moving with the Zygarde. Already with the Floatstone in hand for the Tapu Lele to retreat whenever he needs. And Sam evolving to a Garboder. Evolving that Trubbish that has the energy on it. Maybe, you know, maybe not. Yeah, I don't see why not. Uh, the only other potential reason would be because he just wants to evolve the other Trubbish, but uh, I, I think having the Floatstone on there is, isn't going to hurt you in any way. You're not trying to Choice Band knock out these GX Pokemon. You're trying to counter the other Garbodors generally. Yeah, neither of these players. It kind of is interesting when you get into the Garbodor mirror match where kind of 
during the early to mid game, you want to be playing as few items as possible, and then oftentimes you kind of get to the point where, oh, well, you know, my opponent was able to clean up with a Garboder, and now, you know, Garboder's weak to Psychic, so now I can start hitting, and it kind of just becomes like, oh, well, whatever, I'm just going to play all my items now. Right. We see a Lysander from Sam brings up that Garboder with the uh, Rainbow and Choice Band attached, and another Righteous Edge. Just going to do 20 this time and knock off that rainbow energy. Yeah, Sam's going to make this game as awkward as possible for Philip. If he can remove all of the special energy cards, out, how does Philip win the game? Well, so speaking of special energy, double colorless on Drampa GX and just a passing of the turn. That Garboder stuck active for Philip. Yep, and Sam has access to more Lysander if he so chooses. He can just continue to follow where the special energies go, and that's his plan. Yep, evolves to Garboder. Righteous Edge immediately Discards that double colorless, 50 damage, passes back to <laughs> Philip. I mean, we, we were talking about ways that Sam can come back and, and take this game and when the, that Zygarde on the other side is so scary, and this seems to be the way. He's just not going to let Philip attack him because he can remove all the energies slow and steady. Yep, and another pass of the turn. Professor Kukui is the draw for Sam. He will play it, draw two cards, boost any damage he does this turn by 20. Taking a look through his discard pile, counting his items. Looks like four in there? Yeah, three or four. Three or four. And uh, one unfortunate part for Sam is, although he's being able he's able to remove all these items over on Philip's side, he hasn't been able to find, or, or rather these uh, energies, he hasn't been able to find any energies for himself. He hasn't been able to progress his own board. He's just been uh, using Lysander, this time using the Kakui, and that only drew him two cards. He hasn't been able to get deeper into his deck and find those energies. Yeah, he just has the three energy on the board, but they're all kind of spread out. Philip has to pass the turn back. Looks like Tapu Lele GX was a draw for Sam. Unfortunately for him, his bench is full. And there's another right <laughs> to edge. 50. 450. I know Philip does have energy in his hand. Uh, they're both special, unfortunately. They are the uh, rainbow and double colorless. So will we see another pass here? Yeah, he doesn't want to commit that rainbow energy to the Zygarde until the turn that he's taking a knockout. So he has to hold on to it, and it looks like he's just going to try to set up some damage of his own and just put 20 on this Drampa. Yeah, just retreating Righteous Edging, kind of for no value there, no special energy discarded, just doing a 20 damage. Not even a choice band to boost that damage at all, but he just wants to uh, soften it up for the Zygarde. Yep, that's right. He uh, he would be able to do... Uh, it, he's he's still going to be looking for a couple more cards to, to take the knockout on the Drampa, but uh, it, it does help him to apply a little bit of pressure on his own. Uh, I'm looking over at Sam's side, and we could even see... Uh, Tapu Koko come in in, in some turns uh, <laughs> with the with the damage the way that it's lined up on Philip's side. This is just such an interesting game the way that this is panned out. Yeah, Tapu Koko, a card we've just kind of seen throughout the weekend have a little bit of utility, but not really be great versus anything. There's not a lot of Gyarados in this tournament, nothing like that. But uh, it's just a very solid card that Free Retreat kind of pushes over the top. And it, it's terrible in this matchup. You don't want to give your opponent damage to set off their Berserks, but it, that might actually just be the line. Yeah, we see Sam versus Seekering for the Kakui here. So he can uh, draw two cards, do 20 more damage to the active Pokemon, and that will set it up for a uh, potential Tapu Koko flying flip. Yeah, he sees the lines, and I think he's doing this on purpose. He, he's going to be able to have four prizes available to him whenever he finds the double colorless energy that he's been looking for almost the whole game. <laughs> And we see another Righteous Edge there, this time doing 70 damage because of the Kakui. And Philip, considering his options, no supporters except that Lysander, no way to draw cards that I saw, just some energy, taking a quick look through Sam's discard pile, counting the number of items and other resources he's used. And there's really no way, because of the Tapu Koko being able to hit the bench, there's really no way for Philip to get out of this. It's just it's just going to happen if Sam, <laughs> yeah. if Sam chooses to do. Retreating to the Garboder and passing the turn back. Yep, he finds the double, double colorless, colorless energy. off the top. And that he could even just 
Berserk in and set up some more damage on Garbodor if he wants to. He can hold that and save it for the turn that he wants to Coco. Uh, he has a lot of options in his hand available to him. So that we do see Sam draws the double colors and now has to think about what to do. Is choosing to attach it to the active Drampa GX. Yep, unfortunately the math is a little weird. He's going to be able to place 80 damage. Uh, he would have hoped to have seen a number like 100 so that the Tapu would then take five prizes on that, on that big swing turn with the flying flip. Uh, but this helps too. This also means that he could just choose to uh, use Righteous Edge next turn if this Garbodor doesn't get out of the active spot. But we see the flip zone. Well, yeah, the, the thing is, too, is he just kind of knows that, that those prizes are just there. You know, there's no healing. There's no, you know, scoop-up effects or anything like that. Uh, we see a Rainbow Energy get attached to the Zygarde and an N, bringing both players, if you can believe it, to, but back to six cards. No prizes taken yet in this game. Yeah, but uh, upwards of 300 damage is <laughs> on the board, so we got to uh, keep out, uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, big draw here for Philip. Uh, has to find a choice band if he's able to uh, if he wants to take a knockout and it looks that's like the that's first the first card, card. <laughs> and we see sam does have the double colorless and a teammate so he will be set up for next turn as well and you got to believe that choice band's coming down on that zygarde it is retreat and we're going to see a cell storm for the knockout so the first right. prizes of the game taken by philip there down to four prizes up a game just under 15 minutes remaining in round 10. That Tapu Koko gets promoted. Yep, and this is a bit awkward for Sam. Generally, when you take a big swing and take a bunch of prizes in one turn, you're hoping that that wins the game for you because then you're not susceptible to an end on the following turn. But because he doesn't have the magma base in order to set up that final big knockout with a Berserk and the Drampa, it looks like he has to do the flying flip first, take those four prizes, and then hope that he doesn't get end or hope that he finds cards off that end to continue to stay in this game. Taking a look through Philip's discard pile, considering what he wants to put together here is Sam Chen. A lot of decisions to be made with something like a teammates and w what attack he wants to make, exactly how he wants to structure this turn. Yeah, I, I think he also is counting out the Oricorio damage for himself. Uh, the way that the flying flip works, he would leave the one of the Garbiters with 20 hit points remaining. Uh, the other Garbiter would have 70 hit points remaining. So if there ever could get to nine Pokemon, then he'd have a way to finish the game out. It looks like that would be really difficult to do, though, because he's only going to get two more Pokemon in the discard with the knockout that he's going to get. Yeah, uh, Philip only runs a total of, it looks like, 14 Pokemon, so getting nine in there would be pretty ambitious, but he can always set up for a multiple-turn play. Right. Uh, Sam, always, you know, one of the players who's always going to be aware of that sort of stuff, just always playing to his outs. Even this kind of type of Coco play is not super intuitive. You know, he, he, uh, he saw that and is going to definitely be checking and be aware of every possible thing he can do. Yep, uh, this is just a time where Sam can decide... Maybe this choice band is uh, going to be pretty helpful if, if I need to have extra damage on the Zygarde because um, he's gonna, the Zygarde gets to heal itself for 30. So if you place 50 on it, that means 20 will remain, which means that if he is able to get uh, a magma base uh, berserk, he can, he can return uh, the knockout. But it looks like Sam is actually just going to go pretty aggressive with his Tapu Lele. Going to see an energy drive this turn, it looks like. Retreating the, well, considering switching one Tapu for another. Retreats to Tapu Lele, and yeah, we will see an energy drive for 110. Yeah, I, I don't I don't mind this play at all. It, it feels awkward taking the flying flip knockout. You don't want to uh, leave yourself that susceptible to an end. So why not place the damage on the board now, and you know that if you get through this Zygarde, as long as Philip doesn't have two prize cards remaining, then you're in a great spot to just close this game out with either the Tapu Koko or the Oricorio on those uh, two very susceptible Drampas. Yep, and... Philip now field blowering, getting rid of some item cards, adding those to uh, the discard pile, potentially filling that trash -a -lanch. 
And there is a Lysander bringing up that Drampa, taking two prizes. Phillips down to two prizes, just one EX or GX knockout away from taking this game and this match. Tapu Koko gets promoted on Sam's side. Top deck is a Hex Maniac. Yep, so this, this play actually works out pretty well for Sam. Uh, he can use, if he has uh, the N available to him, he can make Philip go down to two cards. He can take a bunch of prize cards right now, and he knows that it's very difficult for <coughs> uh, for Philip to close out the game this following turn because there's no Drampas on board. Yes, Sam now behind, but like you, behind in prizes, but like you said, perhaps ahead on the board just has to make sure that nothing can go wrong. Going to take his time and consider exactly how to sequence this next turn. Would definitely like to snatch a victory here if he can. There's an Ultra Ball getting rid of the Hex Maniac and an Oracorio. Yep, and Sam's just going to look through. I don't even know if he... If, if he he has to take the top of Lily for the end there, I guess. If he had the end in hand, he obviously wouldn't have done this. But uh, he, he is able to set up that, that play that he's been looking for. Just get Philip's hand down as low as possible so there's no possible way that a Berserk and a Lysander and a double... Well, the double colorless Lysander for the Berserk is uh, possible. As long as that can't happen, I think he's okay. Yeah, so he does wonder tag for the end. Not quite playing it yet, and he has a few other options in his hand, most notably attaching that energy to the active, and now here we see the end. Sam gets six cards, Philip gets two. Sam is going to take four prizes, it looks like, this turn, yep. so he's going to even things up a bit. And that's a huge hand for Sam, and Philip. Uh, Philip's only going to have access to three total cards, two for the end and one for his draw, which means that... Sam's likely going to be able to close out this game. He'll have 10 cards in his hand along with a draw to, to be able to find a Lysander or whatever he needs to, to win this game. Yep, so here we go, the two cards for Philip, six for Sam. And he, Sam has orchestrated himself into a pretty nice position here, went down quite a bit on uh, in prizes, but is now going to come right back and even things up with a flying flip. Yep, and he just wants to check how many total items are in his discard pile. He doesn't want a, a Garbodor to surprise his Tapu Lele. So uh, maybe he wants to play a little safer with the item cards. I think I counted nine. Were you, did you happen to count there? I, I did not see it. So that that's also a pretty scary part for him, too. Yeah, and there's four prizes from Sam. Uh, take knock, taking the knockout on two Drampa GXs, adding 20 damage to the rest of the board. And, yeah, he's just going to hope to dodge uh, something from Philip. If he does have nine items, then that means just Lysander should be able to to close this out. Uh, the, I don't know the retreat cross on the Zygarde. If it's, it's a three. The, that, that makes it mean that means that Philip needs to have uh, the energy as well. Yeah, I could have miscounted the items. I just I thought I counted nine, but it was kind of hard to look, hard to see, rather. So we'll see. He, uh, Philip does have Versus Seeker which can find a Lysander, but I don't think he has an energy to retreat. So that's going to change things here. I'm just going to play oh, a Bridget. Yeah, yeah that, that doesn't help too much. Um, getting some extra Pokemon this late in the game uh, is not going to put Philip in, in, in a great spot. And that means that Sam's hand was not disrupted. That was his supporter for the turn. Yeah, and there's the Bridget just finding a Trubbish. No other real options. Philip down to one prize. Sam just counting it out. There's the double colorless. He can energy drive for the win, and Sam pulls out a game two here. These players move into game three. And uh, I can't believe that Sam was able to, to come up with a strategy on the fly like that. I'm sure he's never in his wildest dreams thought, I'm going to have to beat a Zygarde, uh, the mirror match that has Zygarde, when I don't have any way to get damage on my side of the board. I can't ever activate my Berserk. I'm going to have to Righteous Edge uh, almost a dozen times. And uh, he was able to come out with a strategy that, that won him the, the game there. Well, that's really one of the interesting things. I mean... Pokemon uh, classically has always been a matchup-based game, right? You build your deck, 
you expect to play against certain matchups and you kind of figure out how they work. You know, you talk to any players about, oh, Sam, you know, what do you do against this deck? He he kind of has a strategy going in. You kind of have a general strategy for your deck, you know, Garbo, or, you know, if you want to play items, you can punish them. And then for each matchup, you kind of have a general idea of what you want to do. Um, sometimes it can get down to really granular specifics, just depending on the matchup. But this just shows kind of how good of a player Sam Chen is, where he's saying, my normal strategy isn't going to work. You know, I'm playing against Zygarde for one, so I can't do what I want to do in the first place. But even another strategy I'm thinking of, you know, the uh, just even having access to the Team Magma's secret base is not going to happen either. So now I really need to think, how can I orchestrate this game differently? You know, I, I think there's a lot of players uh, in this room, even uh, now that we've cut down to 64, even who would not have play who not would not have been able to win that game would not have played the same as Sam would not have you know made so many decisions to righteous edge cut his opponent off of energy build up damage set up that Tapu Koko attack it just really shows you how good uh, Sam is at actually playing the game yeah I mean he's just showing why he's here and why his record is as good as that is as good as it is and uh, now we're gonna see. Uh, if he's able to do that and play fast, because he's got four and a half minutes to close out a game three if he wants it. Yeah. With that being said, there were some major missteps from Philip there, so it's not exactly it's not exactly like he had you know his uh, full. It's not exactly like Sam after playing one game kind of figured out how the matchup works and broke it. You know, Philip definitely oh, yeah. had some weird draws there, and Sam had to kind of do a weird game plan. So that's I wouldn't suspect that's how the matchup actually works. I would still say that that Philip is definitely favored in this matchup. This seems very difficult. Yeah, just that the presence of that Zygarde is just so powerful. And we did see Sam started with that Drampa GX. Looks like Philip took a mulligan. Both of these players, I'd expect to see their pace of play quicken as we get down to, I think, under four minutes left in the round. Let's take a look at Sam's prizes. Uh, just one Magma Base prize this time. Tapu <laughs> Coco prize as well. He will not be able to pull off that flying flip strategy he did last game. We can take a look at Philip's. Uh, or Choreo Psychic, not really much. Let's see. Our time actually starts to Trubbish, rather. And Philip will be going first here in game three. Attaches a Psychic to the Drampa and just plays an end. Yeah, Philip, he has... I mean, that's that's not a very great turn for him so far. He's going to need to find more basic Pokemon uh, in order to feel a little bit of a safety net because he knows that Sam, if, if Sam's given two turns, Berserk is able to take, off, uh, take down just about anything in his deck. Yeah, neither of these players have access to the actual clock. They don't know exactly how much time is left, but, but they're both very aware uh, of, you know, they're both very experienced in tournaments, aware of what's going on. They know that there's not, there can't be much time left, and you'll see oh. that's going to change their strategy a little bit. He has a Sycamore in his hand for next turn, but once again, no basic Pokemon. Yeah, he says a Garboder in hand has to pass the turn. Going back to Sam's turn now. Trubbish active, Drampa on the bench. Psychic energy on the Drampa. Looks like Sam considering what to discard with an Ultra Ball now. Yeah, Sam has uh, the Ultra Ball, which means Tapu Lele. Uh, but he's in an awkward spot uh, as far as do you go for a setup like with Fan Club and get yourself a second Tapu Lele for another supporter? Or do you just go for uh, the N here and just maybe you can keep Philip's hand just as bad? It's it just really depends on on how he's feeling about this. Obviously, the more Pokemon that you can get down on your side of the field this late in a game, uh, this late in the match rather, uh, you're gonna feel better. Yeah, you just want to kind of guarantee here, above all else, that you don't just lose the game. And with three Pokemon, you can feel pretty confident in that. That Ultra Ball does find a Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag getting activated. Sam looks like he's just gonna take an N. He pulled that to the front of his deck, but of course, going to look through his deck just to make sure what uh, is prized and what's left. Even when you're in a position like this where you don't have much time left, it's really important not to make any crucial mistakes because you didn't uh, remember what your prizes were. Yep. Just going to look through, make sure. Uh, don't remember if the fan club was prized. Maybe that option wasn't even available to him. Uh, so it looks like the N is what he's going to favor. He's already attached this turn. Does have a choice band that's going to find its home on that Drampa GX. And here's the end. Yeah, a um, little curious to see him play the double colorless energy, or the psychic rather than the double colorless. He has access to more psychic energy. And if Philip uses a Lysander and uh, uses Righteous Edge, you're not, uh, it doesn't really, like, you weren't going to win the game anyways. It was going to take a long longer than uh, than the game would if you if you know what I'm trying to get at, I, I think he it would take too many turns for the game to end right, anyways. Right. If, if that happens, it's kind of irrelevant either way. Right. 
the N is resolving six cards for each player. And uh, Philip probably taking a sigh of relief there. He is able to find, I believe that's the Zygarde along with, or is that a Tapu Lele? And he has, the, Lele and he has the, the Ultra Ball to go find Zygarde likely. Yeah, we see Sam play that Oracle, just a concession to the fact that it is late in the match. We're just at under 20 seconds here. Uh, Tapu Lele hits the board for Philip. Wonder Tag will get activated. And it looks like time will be called on Philip's turn. We could be a few seconds off, but we'll let you know when Judge does call time. There's a Bridget. There's a Zygarde. Yeah, and then, uh, that means this game will not end. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it looks like time, if it hasn't been called already, is going to be called on this turn. Philip taking some time to look through his discard pile again, just checking what is prize and what's not, making sure that he doesn't make any kind of horrible mistake. And looks like it is turn zero. Both of the players shrug, shake hands, and they will be <laughs> taking an unintentional tie here. Never what you want at this stage in the tournament. Uh, kind of unfortunate how uh, I, I Philip probably spent a lot of that game too, thinking he was going to.